Hi guys, good evening and welcome back once again to The Edward. I'm your host Eddie and in today's video I will be discussing what I thought of the latest and very intriguing, very good episode of AMC's The Walking Dead. Uh, so I think I mentioned this in last week's episode review for The Return of Walking Dead. So if you've got AMC Plus, you get to see the episodes a week in advance. So the new episode, which would be episode nine, technically drops on regular AMC today, but that's not the episode I'm covering. I already saw it last week and I covered it and I uploaded it on this channel. I am covering episode 10, which technically won't come out till next Sunday. So you have been warned, uh, full spoilers ahead and uh, make sure you're not confused as to which episode review you're currently watching or listening to, because I don't want to feel anything prematurely by giving it away a week in advance so just want to make that very crystal clear for the record so i just hope you're all aware of that spoilers ahead that being said you have been warned let's dive right back into it so it looks like we have cut back to the present because the caption indicated we were day 30 into the commonwealth which is all of our or not all of our but most of our characters are now seemingly living in the Commonwealth. And a lot of them seem to have jobs, not the most ideal jobs, but jobs that seem to be suited to them prior to the end of the world. And it made sense to me that the majority of characters we did see living in the Commonwealth were the families, like Jerry and Nabila and their family, they're all their kids, Rosita and Gabriel with little Coco. Um, you know, any, and then of course, Daryl with Judith and RJ, he probably brought them there because, you know, it was far safer and far better solution than living within the dilapidated walls of Alexandria, which was literally falling apart. So it made sense to me that a lot of our characters who were there were ones with uh, children because it was the safest bet for their families. But then we have a couple other characters who have no children who probably just wanted to try out a new life for themselves, like Magna and Connie and Kelly. And I didn't, I don't think we knew Connie's profession before the end of the world, but I guess she was a reporter and Kelly's there to help translate, which is great. I don't know if they worked together as a team before the apocalypse, but um, it's cool to see, uh, it's cool to know what Connie uh, did and now currently does again, uh, which is being a reporter. So that's cool. We've met uh, our new governor, uh, Pamela Milton. Don't know much about her from the comics. I think they actually just gender swapped her. I think in the comics, it's a guy, but the crappy son is still the crappy son. God, I don't know what happens to him in the comics, but I sure as shit hope he gets a very violent, very memorable death because I still don't like him. If this episode needed to remind us of what, how much of a little shit he is, mission accomplished. Hats off to the actor that was doing a fantastic job. I'm sure he's a lovely man, but God damn it, I don't like this character. <laughs> Although I did kind of like how Daryl, remembering what Mercer said about how sometimes you got to play nice or be part of a team, even if you're used to normally going it alone. I guess in Daryl's mind, he was thinking, well, maybe it's better to not have this guy as an enemy. Don't want him to be my friend, but I'd rather have him not be an adversary. So I'll let him take the win for this one by giving him the prisoner. You know, for a second there, I thought he had slit Stephanie's throat when he was holding the knife up. And when he quickly moved his hand with the knife that he was holding to her neck, I thought that's what he really did by doing this and slitting her throat. But then the camera quickly panned over and I'm like, oh, he's slashing over the presidential portrait. Okay. I thought he killed Stephanie. I'm like, damn, that's fucked up. That's Eugene's first love right there. And now she's dead. Oh, no. Thank God that wasn't the case. Um, I also loved how in the presidential portrait, I'm pretty sure... That is one of the executive producers of this show, like David Alpert or Apert, whatever his name is. Um, or if he's not an executive producer, he's definitely one of the behind the scenes people because uh, I'm pretty sure that's who that picture, that portrait was made after. I'd be curious to see if that was the case because I'm like, God, he looks familiar. <laughs> so that was that was pretty funny. And I also really love the super creative walker kill we got courtesy of Rosita Espinoza, where she not only broke the walker's leg, because I was like, oh, okay, break the leg and it goes down. Brilliant. I mean, you don't kill it, but you stop it from coming after you. And then I'm like, oh my God, she's ripping the leg off. And 
Then, of course, the rest happened. She stabbed it in the face with its own broken bone. That was brilliant. Nasty, but brilliant. I even said out loud while I was watching that scene unfold. I was like, brilliant. Yes. So cool. So very cool. Oh, and I also loved all the tributes and little references to Shiva during this episode. That was the best. I was a bit confused at first with the Carol storyline and going after the wine. I'm like, okay, I don't see what the wine has to do with Ezekiel. But then when she turned up in Lance's office, I'm like, oh, favor for a favor. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. Don't know if this will actually get her or Ezekiel anywhere with him, but he's a lot more, seems a lot more reasonable and likable than that little shit Sebastian. You know, the Commonwealth, for all intents and purposes, seems like the ideal place, but after Tyler's little display, and then Rosita and the SWAT unit, or whatever you want to call him, discovering his look going into his apartment and discovering that room with all that worker revolt stuff. I'm like, oh, maybe uh, there's some truth to what he's saying here. There's a lot of disenfranchised people within this city. It would be interesting to see uh, problems that are still, unfortunately, very much a problem in today's society in a world that hasn't collapsed. I know the past couple years have made it feel like it's semi-collapsed, but it hasn't, thankfully. But it's interesting to see how real world problems, which is, you know, the feeling of people who are disenfranchised and not treated equally because of uh, their social uh, or their social status or perhaps even uh, the color of their skin. Although in this case, it seems like more of a working class thing here in, the, in this show. It'll be interesting to see how real life modern problems are handled in a post-apocalyptic zombie setting. You know, so I don't think that's something they've addressed on this show. We have seen racism on this show so, as far back as the early uh, seasons. And uh, we've seen uh, some sexism and whatnot, but we haven't seen classism addressed or dealt with on this show. So that'll be an interesting new uh, threat to deal with. And um, I'm not saying the workers themselves are necessarily threatening. Well, they might be to Governor Milton, but our characters in the mix, I don't know. I don't think uh, they would uh, side with the super wealthy or the elite because uh, these people have been literally down and in the dirt and up to their knees in the waste and the dead. So... Yeah, but uh, good episode though, really good. It was a refreshing, interesting um, new take on the on the Walking Dead. You know, it didn't feel even Woodbury or Alexandria didn't feel as advanced and as civilized as the Commonwealth. But there's still something that feels a little off about it. I think this episode teased or implied what that off feeling is: is that people aren't treated as equally as they should be or ought to be as the commonwealth so proudly and loudly likes to exclaim or display that it does that everyone is treated equally and based on uh, Tyler's little outburst and hostage situation in this episode that's probably the case so it'll be interesting to see what happens in the forthcoming episodes while dealing with the continuing threat of the dead now they've got to deal with new threats from the living not necessarily guns and knives in your face yet, but uh, it will be interesting to see what happens. So overall, great episode. I loved our seeing our characters, for the most part, thrive in a new environment, and they seem very happy and content, even though some of them are very keenly aware as to, uh, you know, there's something off about this place. Like, it's for the most part, it's a good, safe place, but... There's also something off about it, too. That's the vibe I'm getting as well. I don't think it's anything as bad or as dark as, like, the secrets Woodbury or Terminus had. But I think there's definitely something off. And I think that off thing is how people are treated. So it'll be interesting to see how that uh, is handled moving forward. But I love seeing so many of our characters thrive in a fairly safe, if not overall hospitable environment. But still nice to see them all, you know, for the moment at least, momentarily happy or content. But yeah, that's it. That's what I thought of this episode. It was great. It had some great zombie kills and they mixed things up a little bit uh, in terms of storytelling, but um, it was still very entertaining. I also loved how smart Mercer is when he immediately looked over to Daryl after the governor congratulated her son on capturing the hostage taker when Mercer, who's clearly a very smart, capable guy, looked over in Daryl and knew exactly what had happened. So I like Mercer. You know, he started off as kind of a rough around the edges type, but Mercer seems to be the most relatable and definitely the most down to earth in terms of most of the Commonwealth characters so far. Maybe we'll meet some more. Oh, you know, Yumiko's brother is also pretty cool and down to earth. And even he has hinted that 
things aren't entirely fair or as they should be in this place. So that's something to think about. What did you guys think of this episode? I'd love to hear your thoughts and feelings on it. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome rest of your night. The Walking Dead drops new episodes every Sunday night on AMC and a week early if you've got AMC Plus like yours truly. Have an awesome rest of your night, everyone. Thanks for watching. And of course, until next time, may the force be with you.